The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. everybody and welcome to the happiness jungle tv show with yours truly your chief happiness officer lindy eldridge and i am fired up today we've got miami florida in the house we have miss patricia rogers and i'll share with you this yeah, woman yeah. is all about unity in service from corporation from corporate america to entrepreneur you are ah. going to learn how to not only thrive, but how to shine. When I met Miss Patricia Rogers, it was at an event, and I had no idea how much she was going to transform and change my life with her words of wisdom. So without wow. further ado, everybody, sit back, relax, have your pen and paper ready, because you are truly going to understand how to take your mindset and become everything that you want to become. Hi, Patricia. Well, hello, Lynn. How are you, Lindy? How are you? Oh, my <laughs> goodness. I feel like I'm blessed and favored right now. Huh? And you are. And so am I. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. I'm you so know, cool. Patricia, along the way, and as I get to know you more and more, I get to know more gold nuggets about how you have become and what you are becoming. And I'm just yeah. so excited because our viewers... Some of them feel like they're just stuck. And I know that after hearing you, they are going to feel unstuck. Share with us your story. Wow, my story. Wow, well, I'm glad you asked that question. That's a good place to start, Lynn. Oh, what is my story? My story is that I am a retired correctional lieutenant. I retired after 29 years of service working for Miami-Dade County. Uh, Department of Correction and Corrections, and there, what my responsibility was. I moved up the ladder, of course, uh, in, in the supervisory level. I started off as a correctional officer. Prior to that, I did, I did serve 12 years in the U.S. Army Reserve, and that was a bonus. And from there, I transitioned into the law enforcement field. And it was a re very rewarding uh, career with benefits and all of those good perks that comes along with the good job. And I moved up in my rank, uh, supervisory level, and that's where I stopped supervising the inmates and I started supervising the staff and the inmates. And what happened with me, though, what I would like to share with the listening audience is that, you know, we can have good jobs and all of those good things that comes with it, the benefits and all of that. But what my story is, is the fact that there are challenges in the workplace. And some of the challenges that I faced as a woman in a predominantly male environment, um, I faced a lot of challenges. And some of the challenges were what we call politics in the workplace. But of course, I didn't know anything about that. I didn't know what that was about. Uh, but I am a very outspoken person. Uh, I'm pretty sure you know that already. <laughs> and what we in, in a, some systems, they don't want you to challenge the system when your rights are being violated. And basically, that's what I did. If I felt a supervisor violated me, I used the processes that were in place, which were possibly a grievance procedure or a personnel complaint or just just a verbal complaint. And I would make it make it known so that they would fix it. But what I learned quickly was they don't fix it. They want to fix you. Wow. <laughs> and they want to step you down because they don't want the complaint. They don't want to deal with the conflict in the workplace. So that's when I, I, I want to share with the audience and I share with people is that fact that when you stand up for your rights, a lot of times you become a target. And that's what we call targeting in the workplace, uh, disparity treatment. And I was one of those individuals. And um, I, the, uh, what, what my biggest challenge was, was that in order to, I guess, shape, shape me or shut me down when I would take the promotional examination, 
what would happen is I would get passed over arbitrarily. And because of the rules of the game, and everybody needs to know the rules of the game, because in every arena we have in life, there are rules to the game. And because I studied for those examinations, and I was always in the top 12 percentile, 10 percentile, 5 percentile, took it on three different occasions. Because of that, I knew the rules to the game. And then, of course, you know, that was not healthy for, for me, for, the, for them or whatever, if you want to say that. Because if my rights were violated in the workplace, I challenged the system. And that was where my biggest dilemma came from. But what I didn't know at the time was, now let me go back. Let me tell you this. I got a lot of accolades because I'm very good at what I do. I love training. I would go out on my own time at libraries and I would train different staff to take the promotional exams so that they too could move up in the rank uh, in their supervisory level and make more money in position, you know, what we call promotions, so to speak. And so I had a lot to give. And I didn't understand the process at the time, but I kept going through that process. And every time I would get on the promotional list, for some reason, a write-up would come or an a, a allegation which led to an investigation. And then they'll, those things, they say, oh, that was their reason for passing me over. Now, mind you, none of this was true. But this is just something, a tool they use to stop some people in the organization from excelling. Okay? And... Then you have to go and you have to do what you have to do, go to the bargaining unit, get an attorney, whatever, all that stuff. And that was a time that I paid high money, high cost for attorney a fee for attorney fees to protect my rights. And of course, every time I excelled, and that's the bonus, every time they had to release my rank. Because there are rules to the game. Wow. Or every wow. game has rules. And I always prevail, but of course it's always my day is today, we'll get you tomorrow. You know, that, that silent, <laughs> unspoken word, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was my biggest dilemma. But the good part about all of that was that I had so many people following me because and looked up to me because I took my own time and I went out no matter what the opposition was that I was facing. I never stopped being a good supervisor. I never punished the people I served because of circumstances that I was facing. And this is what happens in life. Well, a lot of times when we're faced with opposition from one arena, we take it into the next arena and then it causes us to become bitter. And what I decided to do, Lynn, I decided that I was gonna let it make me better. Ooh. Ooh. Let me, let's just stop right here because what you're saying is so powerful because we all want our voices to be heard. Meanwhile, yeah. We're talking with a forked tongue. <laughs> We're not following the rules. We're not following the system. And everything that we do in life, whether it's personal relationships, working, business, raising children, everything that we do in life have rules. You can't escape yeah. the rules of life, right? You just have to learn how to play the game right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's basically what happened. And, and my attorneys always would always say they violate their own rules. Now, I'm going to say this to the audience. Just because I am or you are in the role of uh, you have power or you in that leadership role, you are the CEO of your company. I'm the CEO of my company. I'm a business owner now, you know, does not give me a right to violate other people. See, that's that's very huge. And I think sometimes that's what some entrepreneurs miss, miss the mark, because I don't have a right to treat people any kind of way just because I'm my own boss. That's right. Why? Because those people are the ones that are going to invest in the services that I offer. Yes. So basically, I got a lot of lessons out of it that I didn't see at the time, but as I matured and I understood the dynamics of people and the system and I walk, and it, it, it all comes together in full circle. And then I saw, okay, okay, I, I'm a believer in God. And I would say, okay, God, I got it now. You know, all of this is working together for my good. Uh -huh. So when it came up upon time for me to retire, that's when two years prior to retirement, I started looking for something to do because in the process of working those 29 years, I did see people leave because of frustration. I did see people quit before they reached the retirement 
date. I even, well, I even saw people who would end up on the other side of the bars. I saw people who, God bless them, but they died before they met the mark of their retirement. And even some that right after they retired, they expired. Oh. They didn't get to see the fruit of their labor. Now I say that because a lot of people ask me, where do you get your energy from? Because they, somebody said it, if a wise person learn, a smart person learn from their own mistakes, but a wise person learn from the mistakes of others. Mm. So I saw people who go through challenges before me, so I know that I wasn't gonna leave my cookies on the table. <laughs> I was not going to leave my That's right. on the table. And I stood the test. I stood fast. I persevered through every challenge because I'm going to tell you something that your, everything that you want in life and everything you're looking for is right beyond that challenge. Yes. Let's right? talk about that. I want to talk about, because we have many viewers that are watching and some of them are ready to admit Sometimes I need to curb the way I'm trying. I am communicating. There's a broken link in my communication. I'm not able to get what I want because I'm not talking right. And they're not hearing me. And here's why they're not hearing you. You're making too much noise. <laughs> True that. Yeah. So yeah. In in uh in yeah. this year is absolutely the year of the cookies. And one of my biggest trainings is how to maintain a positive, productive posture while my cookies are crumbling. And Absolutely. you are, you know, you're so delicious because what you're sharing are other people that absolutely have the same challenges as you and I do. And that is learning yep. the limitations and learning how to communicate better so we're heard and not muffled. And we're not getting right. in trouble. And politics no matter where you go, are always going to play a field and a purpose in what we do. And I'm not talking right. government politics. I'm talking where you work, at home. There are politics in everything that we do. It is. And somebody said, I'm in several organizations, and I did have done a lot of things to develop myself, uh, Lynn. And, and, and one organization I'm in, the founder, the founder of that organization always say, if you're not in politics, she said you're not in business. It's true. Wow. It's true. <laughs> you just have to learn how to be able to sit at the round table and communicate with what you want to share. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And one of the yes. biggest things, and you nailed it on the head, is become a good watcher and a listener. And yes. whoever has what it is that you're looking to accomplish, Watch their attitude, watch their actions, watch their posture, yeah, right. and model yes. after them. I know that I watch you a lot, Patricia, and I try to model after you. <laughs> well, yeah, and you and you really, you really, uh, you really gave us some really good meat on uh, at the brunch the other day too. I have to commend you for that. You know, I walked in, I'm like, wow, you know, because I had never heard you share. So you was really inspirational to us as well, because what I heard in your message is about perseverance. No matter what, you know, we have a right. We have a right and we're entitled to everything that we deserve, yeah. but we cannot re re receive it if we quit. If we quit while our cookies are crumbling. That was awesome. Thank that you was so awesome. much. Because the cookies are going to crumble. The Linda cookies are going to crumble. You know, but when you know, also when you know your purpose in life, you have to know what your purpose is. And the, Napoleon Hill says it's so good. You have to, you have to know what it is. You have to write it on paper. You have to see it. You have to know what am I going to give in exchange for what I really want, the fortune or whatever it is that I'm looking for. You have to know where you're going. And when you have a purpose and you know your purpose, Nothing can stop a man or a woman that will not quit. Hello, Mr. Michael Humes. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> yes. Yes, we follow the same mentors. And, uh, you know, it, it gives you great pleasure that when there's a service out there, you know, let, let me talk about this for a second, because, again, you and I are on the same wavelength. Multiple yes. streams of income. Yeah. when it makes sense. That's right. And, and that's what I did. Yeah. yeah. And I took those 29 years when I came into entrepreneur, I was actually hosting events in my backyard because I wanted to get, I was marketing the legal services because it made sense to me to pay 
twenty something dollars a month for my to buy my protection to call an attorney anytime on any matter tap an app it made sense to me and if i had those services during the time i was going through corporate america and the challenges i would not have had to pay high retainer fee that's right but it comes it comes and i was able to help other employees who knew I was marketing the service and the bargaining unit wasn't working on their behalf. We call it sleeping with the enemy uh, when they, they, you know, the bargaining unit want to talk, stop the employee from really pursuing certain things that they have a right to. So they would come to me. So it was just that, Lynn, I can't express the fact that so many things that I went through, how when it came together, I saw the purpose. It became like an aha moment. And in my mind, I said, bring it on. <laughs> Yeah, bring, bring it on. Challenges. Yeah, you and, know, and when you have a solution and it really does work, then you could offer it. So one of the one of the solutions that you have for others, whether it's personal or business, is access to the justice system through your legal mm -hmm. shield business, isn't it? Absolutely, 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 absolutely. And I also, that's one of them. And then you talked about streams of income and we talked about Napoleon Hill. And what I had to do was all of the accolades that I did get in the organization, quite a few, um, is in, as it's in my bio, what I did was when I transitioned over to corporate America, over from corporate America to entrepreneur, I realized that was a whole new arena and I had to be trained basically. So that's when I started following Women's Prosperity Network, National Association for Professional Women. I was in the Chamber of Commerce. I'm still in three of these organizations. I'm still in the National Association for Professional Women. All of these organizations, I got with those people who had what I wanted. And that's what a lot of times we fail to do in corporate America. We retire. We don't prepare and we leave and go out and then we say, oh, well, we're going to travel a while. We travel, but guess what? That gets old. You watch TV and guess what happens? You began watching the same TV channel over and over. I had one officer call me because they still talk to me and I just love it, you know. And he says, you know, Lieutenant, they still call me Lieutenant. Lieutenant, <laughs> I retired and I cut the yard so much till it wasn't even any grass anymore. He, had to <laughs> he said, I my boys fishing so much they said dad we don't want to go fishing anymore <laughs> you know, and all those things you know and so when i did i jumped in with both feet yeah i started joining organizations because people need people yeah and also people was able to teach me what i needed to do and that's when i became a best-selling author yes. i did everything they say entrepreneurs do and i took those 29 years like napoleon here i wrote down my whole life i wrote down my my gifts my talents my skills and that's when i said my god i've been teaching all my life i said even in the military i was, I was a squad leader i've been teaching all my life yeah. i said so that's when my coaches was able to tell me you need to be a coach and that's when I was able to take those 29 years and bring them over into the entrepreneur arena. And as they say, Napoleon Hill says, one sound idea is all a person needs that to, to achieve success. And I was able to package that uh, and, and, and make content that I can teach entrepreneurs not to make some of the mistakes I made because I made a lot of investments in myself. That's a bonus. But there was a lot of times I was out at some of these events and things and if people was marketing things that I know I needed, I needed, I wanted to know, I was just buying stuff. And what happens is you don't have so much time in a day. So basically I realized and I scaled it down and I realized, so what actually doesn't a person, a person need if they want to be an effective, uh, effective uh, entrepreneur? You know, one is definitely we need access to the legal system. We also need a good tax person business tax person. We also need a good financial advisor. We need these things in place. And what happens just because we buy a $99 uh, uh, a business in a, in a box, I'm going to say it like that, meaning a multi-level marketing business, but nobody's training you, thoroughly training you all of the other things and the risk that goes along, the money that you might, you know, invest along the way. So basically in business, we have to have a, a coach has to have a coach. Would you agree? Absolutely. I have a coach. You have a coach. No matter Absolutely. what, mentors will always have a coach because that's how you level up in life. You don't just stay in the same room. You can't be the smartest person in the room. You'll never grow. <laughs> You're absolutely right. And so that's what I've done and I've scaled it all down. And social media, a lot of business people who are 
uh, even have a part time working for corporate America. They have part time businesses. They're leaving money on the table because a lot of people don't even like to use social media. Yeah. I cringe. When I hear a person that's an entrepreneur say, oh, I don't use Facebook. Oh, no, I don't have time for LinkedIn. I don't use because guess what? Guess where the people are in social media. That's exactly, and in, in a few and in, in a few years to come, the whole world is going to be on social media. I agree. And so preparation is very vital to our survival in today's economy. Yeah, yeah. Um, I couldn't agree with you more. I'm so excited about this show. My God, unity in service is what it yeah. is all about. And Patricia, I know I've been with you. I've been in a room with you. There are times that you don't even know that I'm listening. Like when I was just down in South Florida and we were at the women's event together, right? And, and I got a chance to share how to, how to maintain a positive, productive posture while your cookies are crumbling. And then afterwards, yeah. we all came up and we were conversing. Do you realize that even though I was the speaker for that day, I came out with so much because I wanted to hear from my audience and I wanted to know what is it that they want so I could bring and deliver. And then I could stand in a room with smarter people than I so I could come back and go, I've got it. Yes, 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 yes. Right? Yes, That's what we do. Yes. That's what we do. Yes. So there you are in the room, shining so bright, like a like a, just a, a shining star, and you knew exactly how to promote yourself. You knew exactly how to use the selfie stick. You knew exactly <laughs> what to do because you want to make sure that your message is crystal clear and you're not wasting your time. Absolutely. You have time to be management. crystal clear. That's a very good point. You have to be crystal clear in your delivery yeah. because people, like I said, if you want people to uh, to to buy into you and your message, and you are a leader, yeah. you do want people to follow you, and that's why we have to be good leaders. Yeah. You know, and and that's where my my events come into play because I believe that unity in service. We set a platform. What we do, we set a platform so that people like yourself who have the gift of speaking, we want the audience to hear what you said to us. We needed that that day. Mm -hmm. Somebody else needs to hear that message. And that's this right. is why we host networking events. So with the legal, we, we, we do the business coaching and now and also we do the um, the events. And I didn't know I was doing events. I was doing events for free in my backyard, just calling people in. Come on, let's tell all our message. We, I would buy the food. I would buy the the tables, the tents, and everything. This was two years prior to retiring. And I didn't know I had a business. And until I got with my coaches and Women's Prosperity Network, took public speaking training, we have to invest in ourselves. Went with Bill Walsh, took his one week boot, boot camp training for a platinum speaker. We have to invest in ourselves. That's right. And when I did that, that's when I learned, do you know what you're doing is a business? And that's when I stopped paying out of my pocket and I started going to awesome venues, hotels, the best hotels in South Florida. And I started bringing the people together to deliver their messages. The vendors come out, they get a chance to exp ex you know, expose their businesses and service. And the, the uh, relationships that are born in these events is so huge. Huge. It's so huge. I am excited so about you. I am excited about you because we're going to go out and we're going to promote Georgia right now. Yes, we are. Atlanta, Georgia. Hello. You've got an event coming up. Hello. That's what leaders do. They create these events. And I want to share with you, Patricia, the Happiness Jungle Show has the ability to be syndicated all over the world. So if you know someone in Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia, tell them you need to syndicate the Happiness Jungle Show because we got an event going on in your area. You know? Absolutely. Well, I'll certainly be spreading the word because I think this is an awesome platform that you have. And yes, we will be having an event coming up on June the 15th and the 16th, 2018, this year. And we're going to have speakers like Bill Walsh. He's a renowned public speaker, mm. Power Team USA founder. Nancy Matthews is one of our key speakers. And we also, she's a founder of one of the founders of Women's Prosperity Network. Nancy is uh, also, we have Mr. Bashel Majore, Majoria. He's from, he's from England and he's coming. And this has just been so awesome because I would never have dreamed that I would have had these renowned, huge public speakers speak on our stage to the people. And all of my dreams are coming true. And so we will be going up there. The hotels are only two day event. The yeah. hotels are only $98 a night. 
and we're going to have a plethora of speakers. Those three are the renowned are the renowned keynotes, but we'll have about ten other speakers as well because right. it's a two day. Right. We're going to have a DJ. We're going to have a videographer. And you know what I want to do for you? I want to do for you. I want to give you a free ticket to come to our event. Oh my gosh! You talk about yes. blessings. And guess what else I want to do for you? What? I want to pay for your room. Stop it! Shut that front I door. I want you there. I want you there. And, and 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 this is what we do. You know, it's not about money all of the time. I'm sure you've heard it. The audience, I'm sure they've heard it. When you are, uh, when you know your purpose, you're so comfortable doing it, and you're so excited about doing it. Money's not the issue. Money's gonna follow anyway. But what we have to do is stay focused on our purpose. That's right. Happiness our equals purpose. success. <laughs> Success does not equal happiness. I am so proud of you. I am so proud of the panel of professionals that are listening to you and saying I would be more than delighted. I would be honored to be on your platform, on your stage. You're bringing in some of the really big names. And you want to know why, Patricia? Why? Because you're very <laughs> special. You're very unique. And you walk the walk and you talk the talk. And I cannot believe we're almost out of time. Oh, oh, I know. Well, I know. It's been a journey. Last thing I want to say to everybody is that when you go through challenges, always remember one thing, that it's all going to work out in your favor. That's right. If you just focus on your vision. Mm -hmm. And even if you're watching the replay of this and the event has already happened, you get in touch with Patricia, and I promise you, I promise you that what she's going to bring to you is back the event. You want to reach out to her. So make sure that you absolutely reach out to Patricia Rogers because she is the queen of unity and service, without a doubt. She is the connector that you want to be able to call your coach, your mentor. Because your Absolutely. life's going to make a big difference. Absolutely. I never said that life was easy, but I did say that you could be happier. And with Patricia Rogers now a part of your life like she is with mine, yeah. ha, the world yeah. is all in yeah. your hands and in your power. Absolutely. Patricia, I, really enjoy oh, <laughs> I am yeah. all the way from Miami, Florida. We're here in Nashua, New Hampshire. And I hope that you can feel this fire and this heat Absolutely. because what we have for you is good. Good stuff, and it's all on social media. Huh, Patricia? Awesome. awesome. Yes, yes. I would love to work with them, and they can reach me at pat, P-A-T, at unityinservice.net, and they can call me. I'm Woo! always on the phone. I believe in service, and my number is 786-515-5015, and I would love to serve you. Everybody, Thanks. take care. Say goodbye, Patricia. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.